All right, so we'll be talking about our first lesson on Back to the Basics. And we're going to start off in 1 John 5.13. Uh, the Bible says this, These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God that ye may know that ye have eternal life. Uh, so the Bible clearly states that you can know that you have eternal life. And so what we're going to do is we're going to mostly be in John. I figured for beginners that would be great. There's a lot of scripture in John that uh, talk about what's called eternal security. Um, uh, and this also brings you assurance of your salvation. And that's why 1 John was written. If you go through 1 John, you'll see all the things that you would uh, hope to see in your life just to give you insurance or assurance. Either way, it's kind of like an insurance policy, but assurance of your salvation. And not you don't necessarily have to have everything in First John to be saved, but if First John is kind of like a self-examination, uh, if, if those things are in your life, that you can have full assurance that you have uh, salvation. Now, eternal security is so... Um, uh, is made so complicated by by certain people that don't believe it. They don't see the clear passages of Scripture. So that's what we're going to go to. Ones that are just uh, clear, cut, and dry Scriptures that prove the eternal security of the believer. So if you take your Bible and go to John chapter 3, verse, uh, let's see here, 36. John three thirty six says this. It says, He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life, and he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. Now, look back at that. He that believeth on the Son hath, that's present tense, everlasting life. So God has given you everlasting life. Now, let's go to the next scripture. So you have present tense in your possession, everlasting life that God has given to you. Now, let's look at uh, John chapter 5, verse 24. It says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that heareth my word, and believeth on him that sent me, hath everlasting life. There you go again, present tense. He has everlasting life. He hath everlasting life, and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. So that's John chapter 5, verse 24. And jot these down as you go through. You can pause it if, if I'm going a little too fast. I just want to get right to the point uh, and give you the scriptures. Now, if you go to John chapter 6, verse 37, it says, All that the Father giveth me shall come to me, and him that cometh to me I will in no wise cast out. You come to Jesus Christ by faith, he will not ever cast you out. So, let's go to another verse in John. So, John chapter... 10 verse uh, 28 and it says I and I give unto them eternal life and they shall never perish neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand and verse 29 is, is real good v verse right after this it says my father which gave them me is greater than all and no man is able to pluck them out of my father's hand so Jesus Christ says I give them eternal life and they shall never perish that's another verse on eternal security. Those are clear, cut, and dry verses on eternal security. Uh, let's see here. Let's go to John chapter 20, and uh, we'll look at why the book of John was written. In John chapter 20, verse 31, John 20, 31 says, But these are written that ye might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing ye might have life through his name. So the very book of John and why I picked it is not only it's going to be easy for you to jot these down and, and show and teach somebody else, but the whole book of John is written that people would believe and then have life through his son, and that's everlasting life. Uh, so th those are some verses. Let's look at, uh, let's also look at Romans. We'll go to Romans chapter, uh, well, you know what? Uh, yeah, let's go to Romans chapter 4. We'll wrap it up in Romans chapter 4. And this will give you something to think about. And if you have any questions, uh, I, could, I have a list of scripture. But if you have any questions, just let me know and we'll go through some more uh, on this in, at another time. But I just want to lay the foundation. I want to just get back to the basics, give you some scripture here. And John chapter 4 uh, is a really good, uh, it's my actually my favorite chapter and my favorite verses in the Bible. Uh, it just, I guess, gives me great comfort whenever, uh, as some Christians will, and you might, and some Christians don't. They just have a lot of faith, more faith than others. Uh, you know, the Lord's given everybody a measure of faith, and mine's not as strong as some others, but this always gives me comfort. 
uh, okay, Romans chapter 4, if you look at it, in verse 1, it says, What shall we say then that Abraham our father, as pertaining to the flesh, hath found? For if Abraham were justified by works, he hath whereof the glory, but not before God. For what saith the scripture? Abraham believed God, and it was counted unto him for righteousness. Now to him that worketh is the reward not reckoned of grace, but of debt. But to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. Even as David also describeth the blessedness of the man unto whom God imputeth righteousness without works, saying, Blessed are they whose iniquities are forgiven, and whose, sin, whose sins are covered. Now here's the kicker. Here's verse 8. Uh, he talks about how we can, to what we read, he talks about that we cannot be justified by works, uh, that it's by faith that we're saved in the church age, and that's how we come to God is by faith in the finished work of Jesus Christ. And once we've done that, there's a transaction here in Romans chapter 4 where God has taken the sin, our sins and has placed them on His Son Jesus Christ on the cross. He took our sin and then in return gave, a, gave us His righteousness. So there's a transaction. Jesus Christ took our sin. We ha now have His righteousness. Because it's nothing that we can do of ourselves but what He did. So He gave us His righteousness and, it's, and our faith is counted for righteousness. But look what David says about it in verse 8. Uh, now here's the Apostle Paul quoting David. He said, Blessed is the man to whom the Lord will not impute sin. Once you've had that transaction where you've come to Jesus Christ knowing you're a sinner, knowing you deserve hell, and you, you agree with God in your, your lost condition, that's all repentance simply is, is agreeing with God of, uh, about what you are, a sinner, a wretched sinner. Once you recognize yourself in that state and you agree with God, you know, repentance is just a change of mind. You're agreeing with God of what you are, who you are, and what you deserve. You're just agreeing with God and what, what He says. Then He says... Uh, after you've done that, to uh, put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. So what you do is you come by faith to the Lord Jesus Christ, and you just simply ask Him to forgive you of your sin, and to save you. Because it's everything. It's all about Jesus. It's nothing about us. No, we can't do nothing to get saved. Uh, it, there's nothing that we can do in our own power to get saved. It's only by the blood of the Lamb, Jesus Christ. But verse 8 says, Blessed is the man to whom the Lord will not impute sin. That, that's a great passage because what that is teaching is that once that transaction has been made and you have been imputed the righteousness of Jesus Christ, uh, God will never impute sin to your account again. Uh, you have a, a clean slate and it's always clean. Uh, you never have to worry about uh, any. You don't have to worry about going to hell when you die. You have a complete assurance that you have everlasting life, and that righteousness of Jesus Christ is imputed to your account. So those are some verses on eternal security. I hope that's a help to you. This is just lesson one on eternal security. Like I said, if you have any questions, I'll try to get back to them in a later video uh, or uh, inbox me. I'll try to get back to you on certain things and. Uh, when it comes to, to my inbox on YouTube, I, w I would like sincere uh, people that are, are looking for the truth. I don't like to debate. I used to when I was a little bit younger. I like to debate a lot more, but uh, now it's more I'm just going to give you Bible. This is what the Bible says. That was clear, cut, and dry uh, verses on eternal security. So if you have any questions and you're sincerely uh, worrying maybe it's about some passages in the Bible that you don't quite understand that seem to teach maybe you, lose your, you can lose your salvation, uh, yeah, feel free to inbox uh, uh, my YouTube channel. Put it in my inbox. I'll read it and I'll get back to you as, as soon as I can. I uh, appreciate any comments uh, that maybe other brothers in Christ here on YouTube uh, supporting the view of eternal security through the with the Bible. If they want to post it, that's great. That'd be wonderful. Well, ten, uh, well, we're done with this one. This was real quick, and I hope you got those scriptures written down. Underline those in your Bible and uh, put a little note next to that uh, on eternal security. And until next time, have a good day and God bless.